Hello students, I hope you are doing beautiful mathematics. In this video, we will learn about a lot of geometry. We will learn about Apollonius theorem, cosine rule, how to use algebra to bash your way through a geometry problem. We will use this problem from Regional Math Olympiad 2005 to learn all of this. Now remember, this is not the best way to solve this problem. The only way I'm using these techniques is because I want to learn and explore these techniques. I want to share them with you so that you can use them in some other problem. So what are the things that we are going to learn? First of all, we will obviously learn about a little application of midpoint theorem. We will learn about Apollonius theorem, very, very important tool for geometry problems. Then, we will look at an application of the Apollonius theorem. Then we look at another application of the Apollonius theorem, but in two different triangles. It's very interesting. Then we have a quick reminder on the cosine rule. And finally, we will go into the cosine rule, Apollonius theorem, trig bashing, and a bit of centroid properties all together as a final leg of the problem. And Remember, all of these tools are extremely useful for any other geometry problem that you may want to solve. So let's get started. I'll just explain what the problem says. It says that there is a convex quadrilateral, a convex quadrilateral ABCD. What is a convex quadrilateral? Well, it's simple. If you have any quadrilateral, let's say like this, and if there are two points A and B, let's say, two points inside the quadrilateral, and if you join them by a straight line segment, and if the entire line segment is inside the quadrilateral, we say that the quadrilateral is convex. This should be true for any pair of points. How do I remember it? I remember it like this. If I want to go from one point inside the quadrilateral to another point inside the quadrilateral, then the shortest path connecting those two points must be inside the quadrilateral. Shortest paths must be inside the country. That's how I remember it. So, the country's should be convex. Otherwise, you have to go outside the country to take shortest paths. India is not convex. If you look at the map of India, I'll draw, draw a very weird looking map of India. So, it's kind of like this. It's There is a chicken neck and then there is Tripura and all. This is India. So, India is not convex because if you want to go from here to here, Let's say from Calcutta to Tripura, you have to go through Bangladesh if you want to take the shortest route. It's a concave country. India is a concave country. It's not a convex country. So it's a very bad map of India, but I think you get the idea, right? Right now, the way to go to Tripura is that you go straight up to Shiliguri, go to Guwahati, and then go to Tripura. It's a very longer, it's a longer route. If you want to go to, through the shortest route, you can't be inside India anymore. Okay, so I hope the idea of convexity and concavity is clear to you. Many students face a little bit of problem with this concept. Now, it says that there is a convex quadrilateral ABCD, and it's also given that PQRS, PQRS are the midpoints of the four sides. Triangle ARQ, the green triangle, is equilateral and triangle CPS is also equilateral. This is a given data. You can draw the picture, pause the video, draw the picture to follow along, okay? All right, so what do we want to show? We want to show that ABCD this entire quadrilateral is not just any quadrilateral. It's actually a rhombus. Rhombus means all four sides of the quadrilateral are equal. Square is an example of a rhombus. But there could be other types of rhombus. 
So in fact, that's the next question. Find the angles of this rhombus. If you see it is a rhombus, prove that and then find the angles of it. So let's get started by working with a small but beautiful application of midpoint theorem. And it will show that the two equilateral triangles are in fact equal. What does that mean? It means that the sides of the green triangle are equal to the sides of the red triangle. How do we know that? Well, we will do a very simple construction. Join BD. Oops, sorry. Join BD like this. Now, we apply the midpoint theorem to the first quadrilateral. The first triangle, ABD. B is the midpoint. S is the midpoint. So, line joining the midpoints of two sides is equal to half of the third side. That is one of the statements of the midpoint theorem. So line joining the midpoints of two sides is equal to half of the third side. So, PS is half of BD. But the same argument shows QR is half of BD. QR, right? Because you can apply the same argument to this other triangle. That's it. So, that means PS is equal to QR. But PS is coming from the red equilateral triangle and QR is coming from the green equilateral triangle. So, the two equilateral triangles are in fact equal. Excellent. So, this is a very simple but easy, effective application of the midpoint theorem. Let's now go into Apollonius theorem. So, before we apply the Apollonius theorem, let me remind you the concept. The concept is this. If you have a triangle, you want to measure the median of the triangle, you should be able to do it in terms of the three sides. That's the idea. You want to measure the median. You should be able to do this using the three sides. In fact, there is a bigger brother of the Apollonius theorem, which is known as the Stewart's theorem. Maybe I'll talk about it in some other video. Okay? So, what is this? It says that if XYZ is any triangle and XM is the median, then XY square plus XZ square is two times the median square. Median square means XM square plus YZ by two whole square. That means half of the third side whole square. So that's the Apollonius theorem. And there are many ways you can prove this. One way is to use the cosine rule that we will be also talking about in this particular problem. I'll not go into the proof of Apollonius theorem in this theorem, in this video, but I'll go into an application, in fact, two applications of it. It's a very powerful tool in the context of triangle geometry. Okay. So let's look at the first application. In the first application, we will show that AB is equal to BC, AD is equal to BC. This is a very interesting application because it comes from a different, you may say, a theorem that if in a triangle two medians are equal, then it's an isosceles triangle. This, this is of separate interest as well. So I'll write it down. If two medians are equal, then triangle is isosceles. Okay, which triangle am I talking about? Well, I can join AC quickly here. So, ABC in this triangle, PC is equal to AQ. We just showed that the equilateral triangles are equal. So, PC must be equals to AQ. But PC is a median. C is a vertex. It joins the midpoint of the other side. So, it's a median. A is a vertex. Q is the midpoint of the other side. It's a median. The two medians are equal. Therefore, the triangle must be isosceles. Why? You can prove this using the Apollonius theorem. I'll get you started. It's actually quite simple. What you do is you write down the two equations. The first equation is, well, you do it for CP. So, what is CP? So, you have BCC 
बी सी स्क्वायर प्लस ए सी स्क्वायर इज इक्वल टू टू टाइम्स सी पी स्क्वायर प्लस ए बी बाई टू होल स्क्वायर राइट ओके दैट्स द फर्स्ट वन दैट्स फॉर सी पी एंड दस्टिक नाउ लेट्स डू इट फॉर ए क्यू अगेन ए सी स्क्वायर प्लस ए बी स्क्वायर equals to टू times ए क्यू स्क्वायर प्लस बी सी बाई टू होल स्क्वायर नाउ इफ इफ यू सब्सट्रैक दिस टू थियर दिस टू इक्वेशंस यू विल गेट द डिजायर्ड रिजल्ट लेट मी जस्ट ब्रिंग इट डाउन हियर लेट्स ब्रिंग इट डाउन हियर एंड इफ आई सब्सट्रैक दिस टू इफ आई सब्सट्रैक दिस टू आई गेट BC square minus AB square. Obviously, the AC and AC will cancel off. Is equals to two times CP square minus two times AQ square. These will also cancel off because CP is equals to AQ, right? CP and AQ are equal. Two equilateral triangles are equal. And that plus plus AB square by two minus BC square by two. So now you can do the calculation and you can show. BC is equal to AB. Just bring all the ABs to one side. Just bring all the BCs to one side, and you'll be done. Excellent. So BC is equal to AB. Similarly, you can do it for this triangle. The two medians are equal, so AD equal to DC. That's the first application of the Apollonius theorem. Let's go to the second application. It's a more interesting application. It's a kind of surprising application. We have shown that AC AB equal to BC, AB is equal to BC. We have shown that AD equal to DC, AD equal to DC. Now we want to show AD equal to AB. Remember, if we do that, it becomes a rhombus. If this equal to this and this equal to this, if we can show that these two other equalities, if we can show that it becomes a rhombus. Rhombus needs to have, by definition, all four sides equal. So how do we do that? Well. Let's join AC and apply the Apollonius theorem to two different triangles. One is in triangle ABC, where CP is the median. So let's do that. So we have AC square plus BC square is equal to two times CP square plus AB by two whole square. Okay. Let's do the same thing in triangle. This time in triangle ADC. ADC. This triangle. Triangle ADC. So we have AC square plus CD square is equal to two times. C S square plus A D by two whole square. Okay, so that's that's what we know. Now, if we subtract both sides, we already know that A B is equal to B C. We already know A D is equal. So, if we subtract both sides, let's see what what happens. So, if we subtract it, we will be using the first thing that we found. So, we will be using that. So, let me just. Copy it here. AB is equal to BC. We already know. Already know. AB is equal to BC, and AD is equal to DC. So we will be using that. Uh, so let's subtract it. So BC square minus CD square is equal to. Okay, CP and CS are equal. CP and CS are equal, so they will cancel off. So we will have AB square by two. Minus AD square by two. Okay, so AB is equal to BC. So I'll just replace this BC by AB, and CD is equal to AD. So I'll replace this by AD. AB square by two minus AD square by two, and if I bring everything to one side, I get AB is equal to AD, which is this part. Similarly. 
you can show that BC is equal to DC. And that's it. So now in this particular application, we used Apollonius theorem in two adjacent triangles. It's very interesting because in the previous application, we did it in the same triangle. Now we are doing it in two different triangles adjacent. They share, they are sharing a side and therefore they share also some interesting properties. Okay, so now we know it's a rhombus. We know it's a rhombus. We want to find out the angles. To do that, there are many ways, of course. We will be using the cosine rule and a bit of bashing because that's a very important technique for solving geometry problems. Let me remind you about the cosine rule. Cosine rule says that if you know two sides and how wide they're open, you should be able to tell the third side. If you know two sides of a triangle, and how wide they're open, you should be able to tell the third side. So, the way you go about this is like this. xy square plus xz square minus 2 times xy times xz times cosine of theta. This is equal to yz square. You can think of this as an extended version of Pythagoras theorem, where cosine theta becomes 0 if theta is 90 degree. So then you get the Pythagoras theorem. Remember, the angle has to be in between the two sides that you're looking at. The third side is on the other side. Okay, all right. So let's use the cosine rule for the final part of this problem. Cosine rule, Apollonius theorem, centroid properties, everything comes together, it's beautiful. Okay, so first let's do one thing. Let's join AC. And notice that these are the two medians. So this is, so CP and AQ are medians. So this must be the centroid, this point of this triangle, G. So if CG is two times T, then GP is T because centroid divides the median into two is to one ratio. Centroid divides the median into 2 is to 1 ratio. This is a very, very important property of centroids and medians. We will be using that to bash our way into this final leg of the problem. Okay, so CG equals to 2T, GP equals to T. I'm just giving values, but the same thing will be true for this part. Let's call it R and G H. Let's call it H. Again, C H is equal to two T, and S H is equals to D. The same reason, right? It's a centroid. So and C S and C B are equal because of the equilateral triangle, right? Okay. So what about this one? Well. That's also 2T actually. AH is equal to 2T. AH is equal to 2T. And AG is also equal to 2T. Similarly, we have GQ is equal to T. And HR is also equal to T. This one was HS, sorry. HS. Okay. So we have all the T's and 2T's in place. Now let's look at this particular angle. What, the, what is the value of this angle? Well, to understand the value of this angle, let's do one thing. Let's join DH. Remember, DH will also be a median because all the medians pass through one point. So clearly, if these two medians are passing through this point, then DH is also a median. It will pass through and will hit the other side at a 90 degree. Isosceles triangle, AD equal to DC, isosceles triangle, the median hits the third side at 90 degree. That's great. Similarly, BG will also be a median. It will hit the third side at the same point, at the midpoint of the third side, at 90 degree. Now, 
Notice that this angle is 60. This total angle is 60. H A G. Because R A Q, this is a, an equilateral triangle. So this is 60 degree. And since these two triangles are congruent, therefore, this is 30, this is 30. The 60 degree is split into two parts, 30, 30. Similarly, this is 30, this is 30. Okay. Okay. So this angle must be 120. Great. So if this angle is 120 degree, then we know for sure that we can calculate AC in terms of T. So what is AC square? AC square is 2T square plus 2T square minus 2 times 2T times 2T times cosine of 120 degree. I'm using this particular triangle, 2T square, 2T square, 120 degree. So what do we have here? We have AC square is equal to 4T square plus 4T square minus 2 times 4T square times negative half, which is 12T squared. AC squared is 12T squared. AC squared is 12T squared. Okay, that's great. So, can we find the value of AD? Can we find the value of AD? Well, we can. How can we do that? Well, let's suppose the value of AD is X. So, we will again use the cosine rule, but this time in this triangle. Actually, let's use the Apollonius theorem in this triangle. I told you, we will be mixing it up. So, let's, let's use the Apollonius theorem. So this is, finally, okay, let me just use this particular picture. This is, we know, we know that AC squared is equals to 12T squared. Suppose AD is X. So we have X squared plus 12T squared, which is X squared plus 12T squared. And now this is a median. We know that this is 2t, this is t, 2t, this is t. So the median, this line itself is 3t. So this line is also 3t. Is equal to 2 times 3t square plus this, half of this. So half of cd. So x by 2 whole square. This is the bashing part. I am using algebra to bash through the entire calculation. Again, you, we may not use this strategy. I'm just using it to show you the technique. Okay. So what do we have? We have x squared plus 12t squared is equals to 18t squared plus x squared by 2. So let's, let's take everything to all the x's and t's to the same side. So x squared minus x squared by 2 equals to 18t squared minus 12t squared. So x squared by 2 is equals to 6t squared or x squared is equal to 12t squared. But we also know that ac squared is 12t squared, right? Which means ac is equals to x. What is x? x is this side. So ac is equal to x. I just give you the last challenge. So this is like we have done everything that's needed. Can you calculate the four angles of this rhombus? Given the fact that AC, one of the diagonals is equal to one of the sides of the rhombus. Okay, so I think we learned quite a bit using this one problem. It's a very enjoyable problem as well. And uh, if you have any ideas about alternate solutions if you know how to solve the challenge problem please put a comment in the comment section if you're a student of chinta or uh, if you are just joining our community then welcome back and keep on doing beautiful mathematics bye